All right, here is the troubleshooting part of my video. So not everything goes perfect the first time. I'm going to share with you some tips and tricks that I've had to go through when I fired this up for the first time. I need to stop using that term. <laughs> when, I, when I turned this on for the first time and uh, everything was pretty good, um, but I noticed that the um, resistor, here i got to be careful because this thing's on, the resistor on the bias pot was getting really warm. And then I checked the bias. So I have basically the best idea is to unplug here so it's grounded, the signal input. But I need a ground for this demo. So I turn down the volume, turn down your level. And I'm using our fancy standoffs. And I was getting at the time uh, like 70 something millivolts, which translates to 70 milliamps and the way that we have approached this design or i have and you're following along is that those are one ohm uh, resistors precision resistors so the idea is to convert milliamps to millivolts you need to you know basically do the ohms law and that one ohm resistor will then convert to millivolts so you can use a standard milli um, multimeter to measure millivolts. So the stand, these little um, terminals are, are ideal. They are available underneath, but since we have the amp open, it's a little safer to go underneath. But but yeah, so I had 70 milliamps on each tube, which was a lot more dissipation for these 30 watt tubes. I went with um, Tube Amp Doctor, the GE. Uh, was it 6L6 WGC STR tubes? I love them. I think they're great. Uh, and I think they're a perfect match for steel string singer style tubes. Um, really quickly for the rest of the tubes, uh, they're all tube amp doctor for the reverb tube. So the one with all the cross sections, um, cross connections, that is a 12AT7. All right. So what happened was with the bias, I removed the bias pot. So I connected, I had at the time the 3.3K resistor installed on, the, on this, and I connected it so it's like the raw bias into where that feeds into here. So I was basically bypassing and doing exactly like the original um uh, for the steel string singer, the, the Japanese hand-drawn schematic, I followed that. And sure enough, the bias was a lot better. This resistor and capacitor, were, were th these were also getting very hot at the time. So I knew something was not ideal. So I shut everything down, and that's what I did. So I, I just basically jumped the, those two wires, eliminated the this bias pot for now, and I went directly in. I measured here, and I was getting 30 milliamps, okay? So every tube is going to be different, every complement of tubes. So maybe that was okay for the tubes that were in the Seal String Singer when that um, tech from Japan went through the amp. Um, but for me, I thought that that was a little too cold for this amp. So what I did was um, there's a few different ways to approach having an adjustable bias, but... What I did, I changed that pot or that uh, resistor out with a 4.7K. And that brought my 6L6 WGC tubes right in at 35-ish um, millivolts, which actually is milliamps uh, current draw on there. And this is just a quick way of testing. Some folks say that this method of measuring is not um, accurate at all. But I think it's been pretty good. I have a real bias measurement tool and they seem to be pretty close to each other. So so I think that that was solved or is solved now. So I'm happy with the tubes I have. Changing that to a 4.7K gave me a great bias uh, right around 55 to 60% dissipation in the circuit. So I recommend doing that for now. Um, there is a couple different ways of biasing or making this adjustable bias again. Uh, and I'm 
going to do that eventually. All right, so the second thing was I had almost no reverb. So I would crank up the reverb, and it just it, I would have to really go, like, all the way here. And when I went all the way there, there was, like, a pop or, like, some high-pitched squeal on the reverb send. Didn't know what that was about. And this was a simple one. All I had to do was reverse the two leads over here, and now I have beautiful reverb. I think this is the best reverb amp that I own. It's just, it's so deep, it's so lush. Uh, it's pretty high gain, actually, so I run it mainly right there. And since we have the amp on, actually, I can turn her on. So if there was any question that or any doubt that if this amp works, check this out. So I have the smooth and slim. Yeah, it's coming from the speakers I'm borrowing from my Hot Rod Deluxe. And it sounds amazing. This amp is really great. Uh, the step filters work and all. I'm going to do an in-depth video and tone video. The uh, last thing I'm troubleshooting actually right now, and I'll put on the display what sort of different ways of doing it, is biasing the FET. So my FET is super low volume. And what I'm noticing is um, the overdrive. This is basically the only amp that I've seen that uses a 220 or 230K um, voltage drop resistor. And then that after that, I'm getting, after the 10K, like 3 volts. And I know it's supposed to be a lot higher than that. So I think there's something I need to look more involved in this area to, to get the FET to be at an appropriate volume. Because right now you have to kind of sort of crank crank the gain here to get a good level um so i gotta look into that a little bit more but on, on the screen right now i'm going to post uh, the instructions that i'm borrowing from the amp garage which was generously posted on how to bias your fat outside of the amp and it's going to make things a lot easier for you guys to do it that way so i'm going to shut this down i'm you, all, you might notice that uh, there's some goop in between the capacitors now. That was kind of more of a final touch. That's that's hot melt or hot glue. I just put that in there. It makes the capacitors a lot more rigid. Um, and, and anywhere there's an opportunity to, to stiffen up the orange drops, I, I did. I think there's only two. Um, you might want to do these. It's pretty microphonic in a way, uh, but only when you touch them. So under normal operation, you don't really hear anything. Uh, I also did want to mention that this amp is the quietest amp that I've ever built. It is so quiet. And I keep on talking, so I'm going to stop talking. I'm going to shut this down, edit the video, and post it for everyone. So in case there's they're at the troubleshooting stage, there's some insight. Sounding and looking good. Okay, so I'm finishing up troubleshooting, and I'm, I think I'm done. <laughs> uh, I, there's nothing more I can do, so the main thing I've been working on is trying to fine-tune the FET, and i getting some feedback from my reverb tank, so I'm going to just turn that off. Luckily for us, we just go like that. Um, all right, so what I mean by that is that the... Fat input was really low, super low, and after reading on the uh, Amp Garage forums and just getting some tips and tricks, it basically came down to having to bias our FET. Now, the FET I chose, um, actually, every FET is a little different. Uh, the FET I chose required a little bit more of uh, resistance here um, at the source okay so normally i have a 2.7k resistor at this point it's gonna every since every fet is different you're gonna also have to fine tune yours so the two things i did was i swapped out this resistor which was a 220 uh it was just way too low voltage going into this whole network um so i raised this to a 150k this is a two watt it does get a little bit warm at the end, um, and I need to be careful because the amp is on. Uh, but it, it's it's totally safe. And then the other thing I changed is this resistor over here, which I started to fine-tune 
and I it is a two point it was a two point seven, and the output was just still way too low. So I you know had this all the way. Then I changed it to a four point seven, and the four point seven was a lot better, but still not Unity gain compared to the normal input. So I just went for it, and I just I put a ten k in there, and that ten k is really loud, and you could sort of see where I have. Uh, my indicator here that I've marked. So all the way to the right or where that other dot is, is is the lowest setting. So my guess is I need to get another resistor that's somewhere between 4.7 and 10K. So I'm thinking it's either going to be a 5.6 or uh, maybe an 8.1 or 8.2. Whatever is in between there is probably going to be the best. So my ideal setting is that knob or basically the the 10k linear pot we have in here will be at noon for unity gain but for now this is going to do well for me um i mean i found a setting that is unity gain so it's debatable if i need to or not so now I, when i go into the fet input and play a little note it's roughly and that's through the fet it's roughly the same volume as the normal and that's what we wanted and that's what I've been shooting for all along so now I'm happy to say that this amp is electrically done the next up is for me to make the cabinets so troubleshooting is over with which is sort of the thing I stress about the most and I'm glad it's over with